Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. We have a very special guest with us today. She is a nail artist. Please welcome Astrid. Hello, Astrid, and welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone watching. Thank you for having me, Asia. Yes, absolutely. You're most welcome. So I want to go ahead and really get started by asking where are you originally from and tell us a little about your upbringing. Sure. So I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so I grew up there uh, with a small family, my mother, father, um, and a brother. Mm -hmm. So I grew up there. My parents are um, Colombian and Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. So um, my upbringing was a little, I would guess, I, I guess I would say it was a little... Um, kind of like I don't know if you would say like an incubator like we were just in the home we were just there um a little bit of a religious background they had um, my mother was a nurse my father is a tailor mm -hmm. um and it was a good upbringing mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's cool that's really cool so what was like your school experience like as far as grade school college beauty school and things like that Sure. So, um, great school. Everything was cool. Had a lot of friends. Um, very creative. Very like to make things mm -hmm. out of like two like paper uh, not paper dolls uh, pop popsicle stick dolls. Used to make those. I used to make things out of like match boxes. Right. Um, like little you know scenes and just always. Um, crafty, very creative, going to, I don't know if you know, A.C. Moore mm -hmm. and Michael's, those stores. I was always in there. My mother would um, take us there. And, and I was always just making something out of, you know, whatever. One time I made a magazine. So just very crafty and artsy. Um, not necessarily technically trained. Like we might have went, um, had classes like painting classes at the community college when I was young. Right. But I, I, I wasn't a painter. I wasn't sort of technically inclined to learn how to exactly, you know, copy something or or draw an exact portraiture of someone. Um, but then, you know, college, I didn't go to college. Um, mm -hmm. I went to online school right after high school. Mm -hmm. um, and then beauty school, I went to a beauty school in Baltimore, in Maryland. And it was um, an interesting experience. As far as the instructor, she um, did the best she could. Mm -hmm. So, so most of the learning was done. Um, sometimes we were on YouTube in class, so most of the learning was done on our own, and then mm -hmm. after the school um, was over. Mm. So yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. I remember when AC Moore used to be open. And, you know, here in Maryland and stuff like that, they closed that down. Yeah. So it's now either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Right. I've never even been inside of a Hobby Lobby because they, they, I don't think they had those nearby. But yeah, AC Moore, that was that was the store. Mm -hmm. I love that store. Yeah, yeah. Um, where I live now in, in Puerto Rico, they don't have many craft stores. Mm -hmm. So you either buy things on Etsy online or um, ask people to send you stuff. So... Mm, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So as far as hobbies, were there any hobbies of interest prior to getting into the nail industry or was nail something that you've always wanted to do? Sure. So I'll share some of the hobbies. Um, like I said, crafting and making things, um, even down to like uh, greeting cards or when I was in middle school, um, my teacher, one of my favorite teachers, Miss Richmond, I made her like a little plaque. Mm -hmm. um, it probably said like number one teacher or <laughs> something like that. So just, you know, making things, but that, um, I really enjoyed singing and music, listening cool. to music, um, tapes and CDs and listening to that. Um, I was in choir and honors choir as well. So I really enjoyed expressing myself that way. When I got a little older, um, I would say going into high school, I started to do hair. Mm -hmm. um, so I would do my own hair, color my own hair, and then I did friends hair too. Mm. So um, I was doing hair and then to touch on when nails came into play, I think I was, might've been 13. Mm. So a friend of mine, her name was Sherlyn. Um, uh, we went to a salon and we asked them, could we work in the salon? We were like, you know, 13 years old. And mm -hmm. she said, yes, but we, we were like, you know, sweeping up and cleaning the shampoo bowl and doing whatever. 
And then there was an area off to the side that had a manicure table. Mm -hmm. It had a couple of items and we um, fixed it up. Like we, we moved things around, reorganized the little room to the side. And I have a photo, which I don't have with me, but um, maybe I can send it to you if you want to <laughs> list, uh, you know, link it here. But it's the first, um, I guess the first manicure that I did on my friend Sherlyn at the time when I was 13. Mm -hmm. And I took like a string of big pearls that was just like a belt mm -hmm. and I put it um, around her hands and she, we took this picture of her hands and that was, that was like my first, you know, client or um, my first time showing the nails that I, that I did. And from there I would do nails here and there, mm -hmm. but I didn't uh, go to nail school till 2016. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to get into as far as um, your nail art style. Now, how can you describe your nail art style? Mm. Well, the you know, those, those tag words like innovative um, and whatever, eccentric, all those things. Like, right. Those are things that I can write in a bio or write for if somebody's like, oh, you know, give me a, um, a quick paragraph or something that would describe your your nail art so we can include it in this article or or whatever but I mm -hmm. how can I describe it I describe it as I use what I have mm -hmm. I use what I'll find in a in a jewelry store um like a bead store or right. if I go to when I was in California um this uh store over there just little miniature items little metal pieces and anything that I can find that's of interest, I'll take that and I'll just use it however I'm inspired to use it. So to describe it, it's just whatever I feel like I can make that is interesting or has some sort of beauty to it. Um, it it's better for other people to describe it because I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> I wouldn't, it's not It's not like it's out of this world, like, wow. Right. But it, <clears throat> it's just what I, it's what I can create with what I have. Sometimes you know, sometimes we don't have much. Right. Sometimes we don't have access to, um, um, uh, you know, bead stores or mm -hmm. nail supply stores that have charms and, and all those things. So I use what I have. Most right. of the things that you see is because I use what I had <laughs> at the time. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. You definitely have to use like what you have and stuff, because like how you said, not mm -hmm. everyone has access to you know, um, different materials and things like that. So it's like, you know, sometimes people get inspiration from materials from mother nature and things like that. So you can use mm -hmm. anything really as a, as a way to create art. So I love how with the nail yeah. industry, you know, or just with art in general, you can use just anything to create a body of work. That's true. Yep. There is something I'm working on. Um, it, sometimes I take months, like I'll have the idea, I'll make it, but then I won't attach it to the nail till months <laughs> later, just because, just because I don't know, it, my process is uh, improving all the time. So, so, but I have a nail set that I'm wanting to really show pretty soon. Um, yeah, I'll tell you more about it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really, really cool. So I want to get into as far as your brand. So you have your own brand called Curette Nails. So tell us about the journey in building your brand and also were there any obstacles as far as developing your brand? Um, sure. So out of nail school, I was in Maryland and um, I was no longer working. So I, I had worked for four years at um, a dental school, so mm -hmm. university, and I was working as a receptionist. But um, I that reminds me, the, the five favorite nail techs. Hold on. <laughs> but um, so I was working um, there and then I went to nail school and I was doing mobile Mm -hmm. appointments with people in Baltimore, just word of mouth, people that I knew. Um, and how was the brand, like building the brand? Yeah, yeah. What has been your experience like building your brand and did you face any obstacles? Sure. So my experience was I had a lot of friends and family that helped to like uplift me mm -hmm. and give me the confidence to even make a logo to um make it make a, an ad that showed like some of my first ads were like you know moving graphics and 
my friends using their music in the in the ad. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just very, I guess, word of mouth and, mm -hmm. and, and supported by the artist community that I was um, associated with mm -hmm. in Maryland. Um, obstacles, I would say maybe they came mid mid journey mid having the brand mm -hmm. um because i moved to california and there well, let me see how can i put it sometimes it, i guess it depends where you're at but you don't want to feel like you're minimized because it's like oh just the nail girl the nail girl right. on set the nail girl here or this my nail girl or, you know, yeah, yeah. so, so that's, but that's the thing internally that you have to, um, hold the confidence and hold and understand that you're, you're an artist and you have, um, you know, self-esteem and you have the ability to walk into the, into the space and lead with what you're doing and not just be the nail girl, you know? So, right. so I think that that obstacle was just, trying to um, maintain a level of confidence and um, still create art that I liked to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to get into as far as, as far as like doing nails for different avenues. So what drew your interest into doing nails for music videos, films, and editorials? Sure. So, um, as I said, my friends that I was working with, hold on, my camera. They were. Hold on for one second. Okay, I'm back. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so my friends at the time they were music artists in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So, and even they were. Let me start over. So okay. my friends at the time were um, music artists and. Being in Baltimore in that local scene, it allowed me to, you know, share my gifts. And at I guess at that time, not that no one was doing nails, but it was just fun. It was like, right. okay, you do nails, so do nails for this video, do nails for this cover. Um, once somebody saw that, it's like, okay, hey, can you do mine? So it happened like that. And then going to California, music videos, they're happening everywhere all the time. Right. Um, and getting to know different people, like a, a specific director, makeup artist, people will recommend you. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. So you've done collabs with, J, uh, with JBW Watches and TNT Claws on the TV show. You've also worked with Move a Queen, TT the Artist, Doja Cat, and Erica Badu. So tell us about some of your experiences with collaboration and how important is it to collab with other creatives? Sure. Um, so I'll tell you a quick story too about the TNT clause. Okay. So at the time, I believe it was, if I can go down, cause it's one of the first posts on my page. It might've been 2017. I was driving around um, doing Uber. I was still doing nails, but I was also doing Uber um, and Lyft. So I'm driving around and I'm scrolling on Instagram and um, these two sisters that, uh, at the time they had a company called lady fancy nails. They mm -hmm. made a post and they said, you know, we're going to, um, beauty con. So that was that, um, beauty, you know, centered convention mm -hmm. in California. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at it and I'm, they're like, we need, you know, nail techs. So I was new. I, I, I was completely new you know, just finished, um, getting my license, but something told me as I'm sitting there in the Uber, just, uh, you know, doing Uber, right. waiting to get a ride or just thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> um, I look at the Instagram and I submit myself to, you know, their post. And I'm like, you know, I'm a nail artist, send them what I did. Um, the early things that I did and they were like, okay, like, great. And they were receptive and then they were like, okay, it's $800. And in my mind, I'm like, wait, is it 800 to do it? Or do you get $800? Cause the way it was worded, I just didn't know 
what that meant. But in my yeah. mind, I'm like, if it's 800, I'm still going. I'll just pay them and I'll go participate in this. It wasn't 800 to um, to participate. They were paying 800. So at the time, I'm like, wow, you know, that would be like, who, who knew? But I was still willing to pay, even if it like for some reason, I was just still willing to pay. Um, but anyway, I went, I went and then it was, um, Claus had a pop-up with Lady Fancy Nails at the BeautyCon mm -hmm. event. So, um, that's how I was, you know, participating with that. And I met some really, um, cool nail artists at the time that were way more experienced than me. And I was so nervous, had so much anxiety, like really. And, um, yeah, I, I did it and I was happy that I at least got to aim high and, and then make it, you know, mm -hmm. for, for that, for what that was. Um, what was the second part of the question? So um, as far as like collaboration, like how important mm -hmm. is it to collab with other creatives? I think it's important. It is fun. Mm -hmm. It allows um, you to share your art and mm -hmm. other artists and creatives um, you can enhance sometimes their vision with your, you know, nails and it, it's like, it just feels natural and it feels good when you get to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm out of all the people that you mentioned, I did want to point out one of my most favorite collaborations which um, was with my mother <laughs> last year. Yeah, so last year I made a set of uh, nails, a lot of beading and, and very, I guess, sculptural. Mm -hmm. um, and they were heavy. So I don't, I really don't know how. It was maybe an hour and a half she wore those nails, but I put them on her. Um, we took the photo, uh, a, a few photos, and then my friend edited the photo. Um, it's the one on my page where it's like a coral background. Mm -hmm. And then you see these hands and my mom, she has arthritis in her hands. Mm -hmm. So she also kind of was just like, you know, why, why do you want my hands to be part of this? But after the photo was edited and everything came together, I'm so um, happy that I got to include her in something that I have been doing for a few years. And it was just organic. And we, we went out. Um, outside of her home and we did that right on the side of her house that's what that coral background is and um it was shared in like places like russia and this one nail artist was asking the people there like what do y'all think of this and is this nail art and some people were just like what is that and some people were like wow and it was just it was it was cool to see my um that photo you know get appreciated and get looked at and right that it was my mom it was you know that's the the collaborator that I mm. that I that we, you know got to uh, do it with. So mm, yeah, that's really really amazing. That's really really cool. Now, as far as working with brands, TV shows, and music videos, what do you consider as far as rates? Like, how does one charge for their time and for their work and things of that nature? Sure. So, what do I consider, or how do you sort of go about it? Yeah, like what's like your process as far as like you know like charging and pricing for like your work, you know, especially when it comes down to music videos, television shows, collaborating with different artists. Like you know, what's your process, but also like advice too. Um, so it can vary because sometimes it's for me, it's been scenarios where I'll know the makeup artist, and then they bring me on. Maybe an artist has a budget and they present it to you and you you just say yes or no. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's because, well, every time I've gotten booked for something, it's really, it's really been word of mouth. So I'm thankful to all those people who, who saw something in me and said, book, you know, book her, work with her, reach out to her. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the teams, they'll offer you a rate. You can negotiate that rate. Um, making sure that you're including your travel, making sure that you're including food. Right. Um, be, you know, just, it, it's important to be conscious of your value. Right. And not feel small. If you, if, you know, if you're, if you don't know how to um, talk about those things, it's always good maybe to have a, a rate sheet, or something. Right. Um, 
I think even some people, maybe they'll have like, this is what I charge <clears throat> this brand or just like an example of how you itemize your, your rates may be good. Um, depending on your demographic, sometimes your rates will change. Mm-hmm. Like for example, I'm, I'm in Puerto Rico now. So um, there's a different sense of what rates should be mm-hmm. here versus California versus New York versus Baltimore. So right. knowing that as well, is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. So I want to get into as far as nail products. What has been like some of like your favorite nail products for like nail art? Um, my nail products, favorite nail products, I would say the clear builder gels. So mm-hmm. ones that are, um, you know, just thick, they can hold not just charms, but like big metal pieces or, you know, beads and non-yellowing gels mm-hmm. so making sure that if the, if whoever you sent that those nails to if they have them a year from now they didn't that clear gel didn't turn like a tint of yellow so because that can happen so whatever gels they're making now um hard gels that are non-yellowing and clear and just thick and just very sturdy so mm-hmm. that's probably my favorite type of product mm. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Now I want to get into as far as your fashion style. So if you had to describe the Astrid Curette fashion style and aesthetic, how would you describe it? Um, (laughs) The Astrid Curette fashion style and aesthetic. Oh, well, I didn't mention that one of my hobbies was thrifting. Um, Yeah. So growing up, we were always in consignment shops, thrift shops. That's where we got all our clothes aside from, you know, sometimes the malls and Macy's and those kind of stores, but Mm -hmm. the Astra Curette style would be, um, I like accessories. I like colors. Yeah. I like, um, belts. I used to collect belts. So I Mm -hmm. like belts and I just like whatever my mood is, is feeling. Mm Mm-hmm then that would be my style. I also like to always have nails on. Um, If I'm, you know, going somewhere, coordination in that, but Mm -hmm. fun, fun, unique pieces. Mm. Yeah, that's really cool. I like the necklace, like the silver necklace you have on. Thank you. I found this in my mom's room. So (laughs) so I've been wearing it for some, for some weeks. Like, you know, it's it's like a replica. It's not real, you know, real diamonds. It's a replica. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I like, you know, you can always find some unique pieces if you have like aunts or, or older cousins or something that, you know, something that they, they're not using. You can always just, you know, borrow it and, mm-hmm. and, and, and let it enhance your look. Mm, yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. Most definitely. Now, if you had a top five list of your favorite nail artists, who would they be and why? Sure. So let me let me get to my phone. So when I was working at the dental university, mm-hmm. the thing that made me even look to nails, because um, I was I was slow to Instagram. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I wasn't really on it like that, but I saw this nail artist. Her name is um, Kelly Christie Cloud um, Mm -hmm. on Instagram, Kelly K, Kelly underscore K underscore Cloud. So when I saw her page, she does natural nails um, with a lot of cool nail art. At that time, I went to her website and it said, you know, waiting list. And I was like, wait, waiting list. That means that she's fully booked. I was like, wait, I can do nails for like, you know, which, which hopefully in the future one day, you know, I aim to be sustained by nails, um, you know, for a period of time because I've done it part time. Right. But that inspired me and her nail art. I love it. Um, So I would say Kelly Cloud. Then um, there's another one. Sashani. Sashani Gray. Gray. Mm-hmm. Sashani Gray. Yep. I since I saw her work, like it's just dreamy. Like I just I love looking at it and and also the fact that she provides resources for other um nail uh people to mm-hmm. 
do more efficient work. Like she has the stamping class and um, shows how you can provide the service in less time. And that's good for um, if you want to make more money, you know, so, so right. I would say her. Mm -hmm. um, and then three more. Mm hmm. I was, I'm, I'm going to say Telly because she sent me, because <laughs> she sent me, so Telly Talons on Telly Instagram. Telly Talons. Mm -hmm. um, she just posted something in her story the other day. It uh, looks like it was a sneak peek of a shoot, and it was just beautiful. Like, that New York aesthetic is just there, and it's so, you know, bold and um, elevated. So I would say Telly. Okay, the next one would be Ariel Mosses on Instagram. I met her at the TNT um, Claws event way mm -hmm. back then in LA at BeautyCon mm -hmm. and love her as a nail artist. She was very kind to me that day. Um, if you remember, I, I told you I was very shy, had a lot of anxiety and I was like, oh, I'm here with all these big nail artists. They don't know me. I, I can barely draw these little lines. Um, and she was just so kind, and I met her, and we just stayed connected. So I would say Ariel, she's um, very good with hand painting. I ordered a set from her, um, and I can. It was a Octavia Butler inspired set, so I can send you maybe what that looked like. Cool. If you want to include it, and then one more. Yes. Um, and then for the last one, I would say Yana. Um, Yana did my nails on Instagram out of Houston, Texas. So. Um, Early on, we connected on Instagram, as like a lot of us do, connect on Instagram, and I've always loved her work. Um, and yeah, that would be the five. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, I want to get into as far as the nail industry. So what are some things you like about the nail industry, and what are some things you think the nail industry could be improved on? So the things I like, definitely that we can all take part in it and mm -hmm. um with social media now it's the stage for for nails like right. if you wanted to stop nails like I did for like three years and then come back the stage is still yours like it's right. still there mm -hmm. um and it's very collaborative and um it's it's you know seen as a very positive and like beauty centered mm -hmm. um industry right so like i like i like that i like that you can be free with it and, and really make whatever design you want and express yourself freely in in nails and mm -hmm. within nails um it's never going away mm -hmm. so that's a good that's a thing that you can really like about the nail industry is it's just never it's never going to disappear right You'll, there's always room for a nail artist for another nail artist so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what level you start on there's always room for you right um in nails in the nail industry uh i guess what it could improve on i would say i would say the the accessibility between like but <clears throat> between brands and mm -hmm. the nail artists mm -hmm. and even even the nail artists on on in the entry level, I guess, position. Right. Um, I worked with a, a brand um, through Jazz from NailCon. She connected me, and she was one of the first people to book me um, to work with a brand in California. Mm -hmm. um, a few times, I was able to go to their studio and work with them and make content for them. Right. So, but without Jazz, I wouldn't have been able to even get in contact with that brand. Right. Um. So, like. It's more than an affiliate program. Mm -hmm. Like, how can the brands actually support um, these young creators, even creators in their in the middle of their journeys? Right. I know Orly, Orly, they were doing like events in their um, place in California, the Orly Color Labs. They were doing things mm -hmm. there, but just more. Like, I, I would like to see the nail industry improve more on these brands being like just being, how can I put it Asia? Like mm -hmm. for, for the brands to, to really be more collaborative. Yeah. Be more collaborative because mm -hmm. of course it just depends on, for example, like let's just say like a um, Sally Hansen or a brand that's more drugstore. 
their their consumer base is more, um, you know, women who are at home doing their own nails versus versus nail artists that are using their products. Like, there's a little bit of a gap, right? But but it but it's just a fun thing. Like you see, OPI did that collaboration um, mm-hmm. with the young lady um, Coca, yeah, right? Co- Coca Michelle. Mm-hmm, Coca Michelle. So like mm-hmm. OPI did that. Like it would be good to see to see those brands go beyond what they've been doing and and just try some new some new avenues and and mm-hmm. be, be more geared towards community. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So I would say that. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Now, where do you see yourself five to ten years from now? Um. I would see myself, I would see myself like, overlooking a body of water and just, and just like, just, just having, just having participated in like my dream. Right. You know, like, um, I want to keep it a bit private, but Mm -hmm. just, just having participated in that real, you know, touch that real desire that I have inside of me, um, creatively, artistically, like mm-hmm. just having finished and stepped, stepped off of the experience. Like, so right. within, within five to 10 years, way more improved upon as a person, as an artist. And then, um, in the satisfaction of knowing that I just did it like that, right. that, that's where I want to see myself. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. Now, last but not least, where can people find you on social media and how can people support you and your brand? Sure. So I'm on Instagram at I am Curet Nails, um, C-U-R-E-T Nails. And um, on YouTube, you can see something. I have a um, link tree and there's links that I put there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's where they can find me. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Well, thank you so much, Astra, for jumping onto the show. Your work is absolutely great. Um, I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, I really, really enjoyed getting to know you and your story. So thank you so much. This was this was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also, follow me on my social media platforms and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care, stay healthy, and stay beautiful. Bye-bye.